Can we have a motion to approve the agenda? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion K. Thank you, gentlemen. You have the uh, minutes from January 14th and Jan February 11th for in-camera regular council on both dates. Is there any, any errors or omissions? Rick, you got your light on, did you? Yes, I was going to make a motion to approve the January 14th, 2015 regular council meeting, the January 14th, 2015 in camera meeting, February 11th, 2015 regular council meeting, and February 11th, 2015 in camera meeting. Do we have a seconder? All in favor say aye. aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, very briefly, I have just very short warden's remarks and it's concerning the volunteers. <clears throat> the votes have been tallied in the 2015 volunteer representatives are Municipality of the District of, of Yarmouth, Stephen Solos, who volunteers for shift, youth services, Beacon United Church, and Friends of Ellenwood Park. In the town of Yarmouth, volunteer of the year will be Cecil Hamroy, who works for Christmas Daddies, Korean Veterans Monument and Royal Canadian Legion. Stephen and Cecil will attend Provincial Volunteer Awards in Halifax on April 7th and be honored by the Yarmouth Volunteer Reception April 14th at Town Hall. Special thanks to our Recreation Committee members for their assistance in the selection process. Nice work. I would like to uh, just move something uh, <coughs> New business, the application 6.1, I'll bring it forward now so uh, Roger can get on with his evening if we, any objections? Okay, Roger. Good evening, councillors. Um, I'm here tonight to, uh, to talk about a proposal for a telecommunication telecommunication tower at 203 Hard Scratch Road in Brooklyn. Um, a little bit of background for you. Uh, Moody has received an application for the construction of a telecommunications tower at that address. Uh, you have some details in front of you, I, I, I would say. Um, this tower was originally proposed last July. And at that time, Moody's land use bylaw, when I say Moody, Municipality of Yarmouth, land use bylaw only allowed for communication buildings and structures in the rural de development zone. Since then, the municipality has completed the process of amending its municipal planning strategy to allow for towers in other zones. The municipality added section 15.5 to the planning strategy, which states that anyone wishing to construct a tower must meet Industry Canada's CPC 2003 standard and meet certain other criteria. <clears throat> Section 15.5.1.12 of the Municipal Planning Strategy states that it shall be the policy of Council to indicate final concurrence, final concurrence with conditions or non-concurrence of the proposal by resolution within 30 days of the conclusion of Industry Canada's CPC 2003 as amended from time to time. It is important to note that prior to December 23rd, 2014, that is the date that the amendment came into effect and section 15.5 was officially adopted as part of the municipal planning strategy, Eastlink could have put up the tower anyway using the Industry Canada's CPC 2003 procedure. They had completed the public consultation <coughs> and required advertising uh, for this last year. Eastlink did not just build the tower last fall. I believe that that was their way of responding, of respecting the amendment process the municipality was going through and had nearly completed. Eastlink had met all the municipalities and industry candidates' requirements. And what I need from you tonight is a motion indicating Council indicates final concurrence final concurrence with conditions or non-concurrence 
of the proposal for the construction of a telecommunications tower at 203 Hard Scratch Road, Brooklyn. Thank you, Roger. Any further questions of Roger, Trevor? Yes, seeing that improved uh, telecommunications are important for a municipality and town of Yarmouth, uh, what I'll, 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 I will move that the municipality of District of Yarmouth approve final concurrence uh, for the construction of a telecommunications tower at 203 Hard Scratch Road, Brooklyn. Thank you. You have a motion that's been seconded. Any further discussion? Question being called, all in favor say aye. Contrary nay, motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll let you go. We'll we get on to business arising. And uh, first item there is, I think it was going to be a standing item. With the, was the new RIN? Was there anything to add to that, Deputy Warden? Okay, good. We'll move on to 5.2 recommendations from February 11th, committee to whole. 5.2.1. <clears throat> is a request for a grant and uh, this one is time sensitive so I it's, we usually would forward that to budget but because of the time restraints I think we're, we're going to have to deal with that this evening so what's the wishes of council councillor Anthony thank you mr. chair I'll make a motion that uh, the municipality uh, show sponsorship in uh, the amount of uh, two hundred dollars to uh, this conference. Thank you. I'll second that. A motion and seconded. Discussion. Per Any further discussion? Discussion, if I may. Okay, Mr. yes. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, the reason why I brought this uh, the motion forward is in the past I have commented uh, quite often that uh, we have a lot of woodland in southwest Nova, and it really, uh, this uh, conference will include basically it's from Annapolis all the way around to uh, Bridgewater the it's important that we show support to anybody that's still in the wood industry either in the cutting or the lumbering or the milling uh, of wood around here uh, the minister at this time is our MLA Zach Churchill who is the Minister of Natural Resources natural resources are uh, a sponsor to the tune of two thousand dollars and I would like to uh, like I say the reason why I made the motion I think this municipality should fully support this and I have marked it in my calendar and I'm gonna make every effort that I can to go to that when it is in here because they do move it around and I, I there is an opportunity in the wood industry I believe in our area and I'd like to show the support so that's why I made the motion thank you counselor any further discussion Question being called on the motion. All in favor say aye. aye. Contrary nay. Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. 5.3 is a letter of response from our MLA, Mr. Churchill, on the Golden Forest Culvert. You have the copy of the original letter. So that's for information, unless any discussion. Councillor? Again, Mr. Chair, I, I read all of the responses uh, from. Uh, from all the different ministers and from the different departments and I I'm not sure I kind of get the understanding this is before the legal courts now to figure out who's responsible for this so really it's yeah. it's in the hands and they've been fighting this for how long four years, four years. kind of I understand that they're at the end of the road which is used to get into would be to cut or access woodland and funny how the Department of Natural Resources, I'm supporting them on one hand, you know, kind of get a little upset that they won't even fix up, I'll say, it, they call it a private road, but it, it's a road of their doings they made originally. Would you know, or anybody know? Is this? That is correct. They were originally involved in this road. Built, the, the build date was actually way back in 1987. However, I, I'm kind of surprised that the Minister of Natural Resources, Zach Churchill's response here, because for the simple fact that the water on the upstream side of this culvert is now 15 feet above the stream bed. So now it's flooded acres and acres and acres upstream. On top of that, I believe I forwarded a couple pictures of a 
some some camps that were pretty well floating away and uh, I know natural resources would certainly have something to say if uh, me or you done something like that they'd be on top of it uh, I'm kind of disappointed in response but right now it is what it is it is before the courts and hopefully uh, as the minister stated that it will go forward with a speedy recovery however I'd like council to know that uh, in a few months time I'll probably be asking the same question again to see where it's moving because I know that there's only a certain period of time I believe it's from June until either no October or November when some actual work could be done on that I do know the residents have some money in trust waiting to get this done but it's got to get done fairly quickly thank you Thank you, councillors. Moving on to 5.4, information, Young Canda Works, regarding the request. And uh, I guess there's more requests than money available, so uh, we're on the waiting list. It would be the polite way to put it. Any discussion? Okay, councillor. <laughs> At a discussion that we had uh, with the RCMP and the senior safety coordinator, we all felt that there was a, it would be a good opportunity uh, to have somebody uh, fill in or f help out uh, with the senior safety coordinator and so on. And I'm just wondering because all of the, the money and so on from, from this uh, fund at this moment or at this time, we've had more applications and they have money would it be a good thing or would it be all right to ask if staff could look at if there was any other funding venues out there that we might be able to access because we all thought it was a real good idea if we could find somebody to work with a senior safety coordinator is it is that an opportunity or should we just i, I see where it says they hope to get back to us in march but what what is the other counselor's thought something we should pursue or I'd agree with Count Councillor Anthony. We should pursue other avenues. Uh, I mean, we have, um, I think everybody in the community would like to ha be able to have, you know, youth that, from the area and perhaps their relatives, you know, young relatives come back to, to Yarmouth County for the summer to, to, you know, involve themselves in some some really good efforts within the community, learn more about the community, help community members, and also develop, truthfully develop some job skills right here in Yarmouth County so I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get the application on time and um, you know I think I think that uh, what I'd ask staff to do is um, asterisk this for next year in terms of their planning and when it comes in um, you know make make sure that uh, you know and also council make sure that we get on top of this ASAP because um, I'm not certain if people thought it was a priority but I'm from what I'm hearing around the table and thinking myself it, it should be a priority so I mean I don't think we can drop the ball on this this again um, I'm, you know I'm not super pleased that, that we didn't uh, you know see this opportunity uh, quicker so I, I mean a mistake one time is a mistake one time but uh, this can't happen again we, we need to employ some youth here in, in the summer and um, it's part of what we should be doing as a municipality so I, I agree with um, Councillor Anthony, I think that uh, we should we should uh, you know turn over every stone that we can turn over um, over the next little bit to try to to find an alternate source of funds for uh, for some summer employment for this particular project. Would council <coughs> council consider maybe cost sharing that if we could get a grant for ten weeks in the summer? Just something to think about for a few. A few it was still only February. We got to the end of June. I mean, it is a good program. So, uh, no further discussion. We'll move on. New business. Just checking. I didn't miss nothing. We've dealt with 6.1. 6.2 is a January development report. You've all had a chance to go through that. Someone want to move that? Uh, move the development report be accepted. And seconded. All in favor? Contrary, nay. Thank you, gentlemen. 6.3, you have two requests. One from Friends of the Yarmouth Light Society. Councillor? Yes, uh, I just, uh, I think we should just forward actually both of these requests for funding. I don't think either one of them are time sensitive for them to budget. 
Thank you. Do we need a motion? I, okay, someone, is that a motion you're making, Councillor? Second, okay. Any further discussion? Question? All in favor say aye. Aye. Contrary nay, thank you. 6.4 is, uh, 6.4.1 is interest policy I-068-00. Do we wish to adopt that policy? I'll give you a minute to look through it, I guess. Councillor? Yes, um, I'm just looking at this in the interest policy. It says effective date February 23rd, 2000. So it's been in play. Is there anywhere where it says, and I, I may just be confused, or not confused, but um, I'd like to check and see if, uh, just perhaps we could ask Liz if that date's accurate or if the date should be changed, or there's, is there a place where it says the, where the policies, oh, date of last amendment, perhaps at the bottom, is that it? Should, should there be another, I guess the amendment date goes on when it's when it's amended and passed by council, is that it? That, that's correct. Okay, thank you, just thanks for the clarification. But I'll, I'll actually um, uh, make a motion, and, and, and I guess essentially uh, this this came to us, uh, the interest policy. There was some um, confusion um, and maybe not the greatest clarity around when interest uh, was accruing on on overdue on overdue accounts. So we had, you know, at, at our policy uh, committee, we had um, many many discussions about this, and, and, and it actually becomes a a fairly complicated issue, but we believe that uh, certainly this this clears up that uh, those issues. So I'd like to move that we uh, the municipality district of Yarmouth adopt um, the amended uh, interest policy I-068-00. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Any discussion? Question being called. All in favor, say aye. Contrary name, motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. 6.4-2 is the low income, which is we're not voting on that policy. You're just voting to add the CPI adjustment for the year to it. So. Yeah, adjustment. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have a seconder for that? Moved and seconded, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Contrary nay, thank you gentlemen. 6.4.3 is the healthy eating in municipal and recreation settings policy H-065-14. We uh, decided to uh, table that for now and have some more discussion. You moving to table that for this evening? Yes, yes, I am. Okay. Councillor? I'll second that for discussion. Moved and seconded to table this item. Further discussion? Right. Um, I'd like to suggest that we have uh, Mr. Gildares and, and, and along with the team that put the policy together. Um, do do another presentation jointly at um, uh, either jointly or, or separately but at the same um, committee of the whole uh, meeting or at our next committee of the whole meeting if possible because I know we want to get this this on on the go uh, for approval ASAP but I think there are still some questions around the policy's impact and I guess for surety's sake um, you know I, I think everybody wants to balance um, you know people's individual rights uh, to, to, to choose what to eat with the protection of, of people's health. So I, I guess what I'm hearing is I'm hearing two, two, uh, two things out there. People, people do want to, and it's, a, it's certainly a laudable goal, people want to have healthy choices available. But on the other hand, um, people don't want to necessarily have their choices uh, controlled you know, to too great an extent. So, um, I think I think we just need to have some conversation about whether or not the policy meets those two uh, two criteria, and and uh, and then I think we can move move forward with the with the in a positive way. 
Thank you. Deputy Warden. Um, I agree. I think it's a it's a good idea to uh, um, to have the people uh, responsible for for putting the policy together um, into into see council again if there's uh, and there seems to be still some some things that aren't clear. Um, yeah. So that's all I'll say for now. Thank you. Any further discussion? Gerard, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. Uh, would it be better? Are you talking to have the discussion at council, Trevor? Are you? But you're. But did you committee the whole or in council? You you table. Well, the motion was to table it. Yes. And uh, yes. Okay. No, no. But uh, shouldn't we have the the discussion privately first? No. Well, uh, okay. no, I don't. I don't know. I think it's important that people understand why or what we're this the policy is and, and the ramifications and counselor. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 no need for a private conversation around that. There's nothing under the Municipal Government Act that would really enable us to 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 have that, you know, private conversation. I think it's I think it's a good idea. We can have the conversation at the next regularly scheduled council meeting. But I think it's a good idea to get all of the people that were that are, you know, stakeholders in developing it, um, or developed it. I won't say stakeholders in developing; I'll say developed it, and people that had input. I guess specifically the Mariner Center folks, and uh, you know, to get a, a good rounded view and be able to ask questions with everybody here, so we can move forward with with a policy. Council or committed whole? Would it be better in committed whole, possibly a, a day session? Yes, and then it will move with the council meeting and, and okay. Any further discussion? Question. Question being called, all in favor say aye. aye. Contrary nay, motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Six point five EMO, Councillor Anthony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to my fellow uh, councillors. As you're all well aware of, uh, here in February uh, the 13th, 14th, 15th, that weekend we had a terrible snowstorm here in our uh, county and well, right across the province, but uh, we were inundated with uh, more snow than what we were normally used to. Uh, for those of us that sit on EMO, the warden and uh, Councillor John Cunningham, uh, we have uh, sit down on a not on a monthly but as necessary every couple of months to have discussion after the storm arthur went through uh there was a lot of discussion anyway as you well know emo has a facebook page and in this storm the snowstorm that we just went through uh harold monitors the the facebook page not every five minutes but he does check it. Anyway, and I'm standing up and defending Harold, for those of you that don't know. Somebody went on the, got a hold of Harold and ripped him across the coals for some cars that were stuck on the main shore road. I guess this was about 9.30 at night. Harold had no idea. Well, that didn't matter. They were pretty upset with him. He got their phone number. He called uh, transport uh, in Halifax, asked him to get graders or whatever out there because he didn't know if people were in the cars or not. Anyway, you've seen it in the Vanguard, the, the highways, the RCMP went over. There was nobody in the cars. But on the Facebook page, it's not on there now, this person gave Harold quite a raking over the coals, gave EMO quite a raking over the coals. Uh, Harold then, I believe, got in touch with them and had another conversation, and it was removed. EMO is not there. I mean, we, Harold, Harold has no way of knowing cars stuck on Pinckney's Point or cars stuck on the Chabot Road. And it's not EMO's responsibility to get out there with a snowplow or anything else. So uh, Harold and I have had uh, quite a discussion about it. 
and uh, at the end of January they had a course at, here in Yarmouth, but there's another course coming up in uh, April, and it's going to be open to any elected officials. It's going to be open to the fire departments and so on to go in. And it's uh, I can't remember the exact what the course is, but I think uh, ourselves as elected officials we should go in and try and take in some of these courses because EMO is exactly there. It's emergency measures. And if the snowstorm had shut down, uh, the power had knocked up the power grid, and there was a snow, and people didn't have no way of heating their homes and so on, EMO would have been activated. But for a snowstorm and a car stuck in the road, I don't think our executive director should be persecuted for something he didn't know about. And I just wanted to, I've known Harold for a long time. Harold works very hard at that job. He does an excellent job. And I know it upset him. And he, as soon as he knew, he stepped outside of his boundaries and tried to get it looked after. But that's, when a car is stuck in the, in, on the road, it's up to the owner of the vehicle to call uh, Transport Canada and let them know that their car is stuck there let them know if they're staying in the car or they're they're going home so they know about it and that's what happened down on the Chabot road the people when they were stuck there they called uh, the highways and let them know that their car was stuck in the ditch and so on and that they were going home or they were staying at a house or whatever but harold took uh, i know harold was really upset counselors and i just wanted to bring it to your attention that i don't i didn't think that was right and i know this is televised uh, uh, to people later on on cable and I just wanted to show my support to Harold, Mr. Warden, for the work that he does. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure, but some of those Facebook accounts, like particularly EMO and, and there's several more, can't they just be for information and you're not allowed to comment on? I'm not no, I mean, I, I thought that you could. Uh, I know the town has some, yeah, th theirs is open, but if you not going to be polite or anything you just gone deleted the counselor yeah you're absolutely right uh mr warden uh those accounts can be set up that they're information only and uh, no comments could be made right. on the site um, maybe at our next uh director's meeting we should discuss that and uh actually i'll make a note of that right okay. now and i'll make sure that that's uh forwarded to harold at our next meeting uh, we'll discuss that because uh i wasn't aware of the situation counselor anthony and i i think that's terrible uh, that was only a very localized thing, and, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that Harold did step outside of this box, even though he didn't have to. And that just shows what kind of person he is and what he does. Uh, unfortunately, some people think uh, that they can do stuff like that, and I don't think it's right. Okay, thank you. Uh, 6.7, Councillor Cunningham, the CMHC seed funding for affordable housing development. you want to speak to that? Oh, um, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go back to 6.6 .6, Mariner Center Expansion Project. You have the information in front of you. It was um, a pleasure to be able to attend in, in the fall, um, you know, a, a, a community planning session that they held at the Mariner Center. It was well attended. Um, a lot of community leaders were there and people interested in fitness and recreation and I guess the long and short of it is that there's some interest in expanding the capabilities at, at, at the Mariner Center. It's been there for 10 years. I have children that, that use it regularly. It's, 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 it's a fantastic thing uh, for fitness and uh, you know the Mariners hockey games become a real focal point for the community and and it's been in you know to, to our credit council's credit and the community's credit um, and the in the in the Mariner Center's credit um, you know, we have done some things in terms of expansion over the last uh, number of years. Uh, having said that, uh, there is what what seems to be a willingness to to, to expand the capabilities there. Um, and and again, we don't know just what would be going there. Um, they're requesting uh, some dollars, um, seven thousand dollars, basically of twenty-eight thousand dollars for for um, you know. Um, a needs assessment and feasibility study and um, 
I'll, I'll move that we uh, support the Mariner Center in the amount of $7,000 to uh, have that needs assessment and feasibility study uh, carried out. Um, that's my motion. Thank you, Councillor. We have a motion and been seconded. Further discussion? Go ahead. John. Uh, I, I support this motion in principle. Uh, the simple fact, I think it's important that we move forward in finding out uh, what what things or attractions we should possibly have at the Mariner Center. However, one thing that I'd like to caution our council in the Mariner Center, hopefully this relate, this message get relayed, I don't think that we should be competing with the private sector. Um, anything that we do, it's not our mandate as far as I'm concerned to, uh, to, to overstep the boundaries of a uh, of a business that that's trying to survive whether it be a fitness center or something like that so i just want uh that thought to be uh, forwarded to the uh to the mariner center board and stuff and i'll be bringing that point up again if uh when we finally do see the report so i just want to make that a point however i do support this motion in principle thank you councillor further discussion question. question being called all in favor say aye, aye. contrary nay Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Councillor Cunningham, <laughs> CMHC. The, um, the 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 choice committee is a a, a committee and and it's um, made up of, of um, um, folks from from Yarmouth County, and um, just waiting for it to um, to open up here, and uh, and what they're what they're asking for is some funding. Uh, not not funding. Sorry, uh, they're looking for a letter to um, um, look at the affordable housing issue, um, support a project. Sorry to to uh, um, um, look at the affordable housing development uh, in the area. My apologies. I'm I'm just going to take a moment to get the uh, yeah I'll, I'll to get it open the way the way. Been a little bit just to uh, provide some context for. Uh, that particular committee, even though I, I don't sit on it, was involved in, in the early days, that committee um, sort of evolved out of a, a fairly large project in our community that looked at economic security and specifically from a women's perspective. Uh, so that spawned, that work spawned sort of six or seven different community committees. And the Choice Housing Committee is by far the, the most well attended and, and dynamic committee going. They've done some remarkable work. We've seen it uh, come across our desk in health, uh, in the health sector, and uh, it's something to really be proud of. So it's a, it's a really active uh, community committee there. Thank you for that segue, Steve. Uh, I, do, I do have my, um, the information up. In, in any event, uh, Kathleen Mooney chairs the committee. I, I sit on the committee. And uh, the committee wants to uh, apply for seed funding uh, and it would be the amount of, of $10,000 and through CMHC and uh, what they need is they need a letter from us not not funding from us but a letter of support from the municipality as a as a community stakeholder and again that study is important for for looking at the issue of social housing in in the Yarmouth area it is a big issue uh, lots of folks are having trouble getting affordable and proper housing, so they want to study the issue so that we can, uh, you know, move our way forward in in in, in Yarmouth County uh, around the issue of affordable housing. So I'll make, having said that, I'll make the motion uh, to um, have the municipality of District of Yarmouth uh, forward a letter of support for that application uh, to the Choice Committee. Second. Thank you, Councillor. Seconded. Okay. Further discussion. Question being called, all in favor say aye. Contrary, nay. Motion carried. You have your reports in front of you. If you have no questions of any uh, committee members, we'll move on. I'm sorry, I don't know who was, don't know who was first, so I'm going to press John your. Uh, for all of those, uh, there was no uh, PAC meeting this month, and the YASTA meeting was uh, canceled this month due to a uh, lack of quorum. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cunningham. Yeah, yes, Mr. Ward, this isn't on the agenda, but I just wanted to ask the question uh, that perhaps we could have at the next council meeting, uh, regular schedule council meeting, a, a date 
potentially staff could have that maybe thinking of a date for the public information session for the public works building is that possible to have a discussion of that on the next uh, regular scheduled council meeting I would say uh, have some information for us and we'll set a date it's going to be spring anyway or later on I so please just make a note of that please what uh, what are you looking for specifically Rick I'm sorry I don't know who's who I got here no, John. I got four or five oh, you lights. Got me. all uh, right I, I, I got both of you go ahead and then I'll let Rick and then Trevor sorry guys no I don't want to change the subject so well okay Rick Rick uh, I just want to let everybody know that uh, friends of the light had a really good donation uh, a couple of weeks ago when the Tim Hortons closed on Stars Road that Dave Ehrenberg donated most of the tables and chairs that were in there, which were in really good shape to the yeah. Sons of the Light. Good. Thank you. Counselor. Well, that was excellent, of Dave. We should we should actually send a letter of thanks. Yeah. On behalf of the municipality. Friends of the Light, Friends of the Light would oh. be fantastic. Uh, j just the, the particulars of that, I guess it's just to talk about setting a date and, and maybe about, you know, what the public consultation staff was staff was supposed to, yeah. to to bring that to us and we didn't give a date but uh you know it's probably time to talk with that a little bit and get some of the details fleshed out around what yeah. that might look like so sure i i think it's basically what we're looking for in a building and, and uh probably a figure on it anyhow so we can go to the public and get some input and move forward okay counselor Mr. Chair, before we go on with a uh, recommendation from the in-camera meeting, I just want to uh, state again that uh, I will be unavailable for the next uh, regularly scheduled council meeting in March. Uh, I believe also my colleague, Councillor Churchill, will not be available for that meeting either. Is just that both committee to whole or in no, regular council? just for the regular council meeting. Uh, on the, the whole, I will be will be the 25th again, again yeah. I think, somewhere. And you too. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Uh, recommendations from in camera. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion for an order to remedy pin number 9017-9037 for dangerous and unsightly premises. I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Question. Question being called. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Contrary, nay. Motion carried. Thank you. I thought we had. Do we have one more recommendation, Liz? Yes. The appointments to the. Oh. Yes, the board. time I'd like to make a, a motion to appoint Rebecca Cutro and Dr. Mohammed Semi to the ASTA board. Thank you. Uh, Councilor, you had your light on. Was you, you turned it off again. Okay, John, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that motion. Uh, I also want to uh, since the motion has been seconded, I just wanted to state in, in regards to that motion, one position is going to be opening up in uh, June where one uh, lady, Helen Cook, is going to be stepping away from the board and she gave counselor her notice then. So one position would be immediate. The second position would start in, in June. Okay. It's one of the few boards that actually we have more people willing to set on it than uh, we have positions in, uh, and uh, so we're going to try to work with that too. Any further discussion? Question being called, all in favor say aye. aye. Contrary nay, thank you. I just want to check with Liz before I adjourn. We good? <laughs> Sorry, Leland, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I have two comments. Uh, one of the, uh, the municipality's volunteer of, of the year, uh, Stephen Solos, 
it uh, gives me great pleasure to say, you know, that those boys, well, Stephen grew up on the Wyman Road in Chabog. David, his brother also, and his older brother, John. And what it really amazes me is that John won it, was a volunteer for the municipality one year. And David Solos was also a volunteer of the year. And it made me feel good when you said uh, Stephen Solos. And uh, also, <laughs> Not that it's any better area than anywhere else or any better district, but uh, the district, District 7 has, I think, had more volunteers uh, being honored than anywhere else. Uh, down on Chabog Point, uh, Vic Amiro, Gary Archibald, and there was somebody else's name down there that, that I, I remiss right at the moment, but then the solos and so on. It, uh, I feel good that uh, those people have, uh, have uh, won in the, in the past or been chosen to be the ones to move forward for us and so on and it's a good feeling so you're done gloating is it the drinking water or what <laughs> uh, it, it could be it could be it could be the milk okay sean yeah i'd like to commend uh, the solace family for for certainly doing a lot of volunteer work in the community and they don't only volunteer in district seven council <laughs> uh, john has been a great volunteer and so has not dave and and the recommendation is certainly fits well with me and especially in the one on a side note i am originally from district seven so and my one last comment we have been looking for and i know we have uh, an ad in the paper at this time looking for somebody uh, to possibly be a, a representative on waste check and i just thought where well, this is a televised uh, meeting and so on that i kind of put out a little extra request that uh, Waste Check uh, uh, Region 7 has been the leader in the last number of years for waste diversion across the province of Nova Scotia. And I would, I know there is people out there, there is somebody out there. And if uh, anybody's listening, if they would send in a resume that they'd like to sit on uh, on Waste Check, the Solid Waste uh, Resource Committee, uh, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it as being the chairman. It, uh, it's a good organization. So if any of you fellow counselors know of anybody, ask them to send in a resume or if anybody out there listening, send in a resume to please sit on that committee. Thank you. And I'm done. I'm, I'm going to pipe in quickly just to do some gloating on behalf of uh, Waste Check. And uh, I'm not sure everybody realizes, but uh, whenever Waste Check comes up, I always want to reiterate that Nova Scotia uh, has one of the strongest recycling programs uh, in the country. Uh, and if I get the numbers wrong, I apologize, but I, I understand the average garbage per household, sort of landfill garbage per household across the country, somewhere around uh, 800 pounds I want to say and then uh, the average in Nova Scotia is uh, about half of that maybe a little over half of that uh, and our area of Nova Scotia has the lowest uh, in in this whole province so Southwest Nova Scotia is, is really a world-class uh, recycling area and as we know that's a real topical issue so I think we should all be, uh, in, in, in addition to the complaining, and believe you me, uh, I'm complaining around the house about separating stuff, but uh, when you go to another jurisdiction and, and you don't separate, it's all of a sudden like, I really have to put all of this garbage in one place, and it, it just feels weird because we've come so far. So that's a really, really, really um, impressive area to be involved with. Yeah. Last comment, if I may. You know that Waste Check has been the leader in the respects of uh, coming forward with different ideas that the other regions, some of the other regions are, are picking up. Business of the month, a lot of the units now or the regions are picking up on that. The apps program that we have, there's a lot of the units now are picking that up. Uh, it, it's amazing the staff out there work very diligently come up with a lot of good ideas and it uh, as I sit on regional chairs and I sit on the RFB now which is about as far as I can go before I can be uh, a member or, or on the board of uh, Nova Scotia environment when I sit at the table at regional chairs or at the RFB I feel good when I'm sitting there and I know that this area has done an excellent job and we're below the 300 kgs we're around 280 kgs per person 
in this area. And uh, yeah, it's over 300 everywhere else in Nova Scotia. I think it's up around 600 kgs or better in Halifax alone, which I understand. But this area, so if there's somebody out there that wishes to sit on that board, it is a very active board and it's a good board to sit on. A lot of good ideas. My last comment. Thank you. Thank all of you. Second. All in favor. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice meeting.